Hi, my name's John. Welcome to another Sunday night nightcap. Tonight's nightcap, a lot of people will be pleased to know, is basically all machining. Uh, I was away all day Saturday with Richard. Uh, went to pick some parts up for the steel wagon. I wasn't. Uh, I didn't take any video of what we're doing. So it's all workshop stuff tonight. I carry on with the Horizon lathe. Uh, last weekend we set up the compound slay to machine a taper. I got the I got the taper dummy manual machined, and I made a start on machining the spindle protector. I've got a special guest comes and does the draw for this week's raffle. And with this week's raffle was this lovely body. 0 to 50 mil DTI indicator that was kindly donated by Joe. Hello, my name is Brett and I am John's oldest grandson. Welcome to our weekly draw. This week's draw is for this clock age. This week's winner is. What does it say? Good lad. Joe. Something bring it towards the camera. I can't see it. Let's have a look. You'll bring it towards the camera. Is Joe. It says Joe Wardle. Joe Wardle. Thanks for watching and good luck on next week's draw. Bye. Bye. That was great, Brett. Thanks very much for that. If, Joe, if you get in touch with us, I'll need your postal address and I'll get this posted off here and hopefully you'll end up with it before Christmas because looking at your name you must be okay. I'm going to do another draw tonight and this week's draw is going to be another Batty Large Downer Metric Indicator. This one's exactly the same except it's got a 25mm 25 25mm 25 stroke. I've had a few of these given, uh, Joe gives them, basically I can only use one, Joe doesn't want them back. Um, my friend Bob who stripped and repaired them or stripped and cleaned them, he's got a one, obviously I've got one. And the rest Joe just wants to, to give away basically. I mean, you can't sell things you get given, so I think giving them away is giving a little bit back to all my viewers who have helped us basically get to the stage I'm at today. So that's what it is, it's a 50mm body DTI indicator. If you want to try and win this, all you've got to do is email me with your name. I need a full name, a name like Ian or John's no good, it's got to be Ian Bloggs or John whatever, or part of your email address just so I can identify you. Um, all, like I said, just send me your email address. That's my email address up there somewhere. It will be automatically entered into the draw. Anybody that's entered any of the previous draws, your name just remains in the hat. Well, it's bucket now. The hat wasn't big enough. Unless you win, in which case it doesn't go back in. So that's going to be this week's draw. Certainly well worth winning. In last week's video, I set up the compound slide ready to cut that taper. The first thing I need to do is replicate the end of the spindle. Then I can use that as a test piece to go into the spindle protector and into the collar chuck, which is the whole idea of doing what I'm doing. I'll put a chuck on here, I've got a suitable bit of bar, I'll put that in and then we'll see if we can machine that taper.
I'm going to suit a piece of bar here. I just want to machine that end flat, then I'll probably change the jaws for the reverse jaws on the chuck to cut the tape out with. I'm just going to centre drill the end of this for no other reason than it's often handy to have a centre drill mark in a piece of material. So break that nasty sharp edge. First jaws in to this chuck, so it'll be interesting to see how accurate it does or doesn't run. That's jaw one at the top. And so number one. Generally the last one you pick up. Three, four, two, one. <coughs> so you turn the round, you see the start of the scroll, which is there, which number one goes in, and number two, strangely enough. Two started. Number three. And then that's the last one. Looks like they're all going to meet in the centre, which is always a good, a good sign. Right, which you do. into there it's hot up here it's a chuck jaws I put a clock gauge on here just so interest to see how far out this is actually running See, I made the I made the chuck fit, and I set the chuck up with the ordinary jaws.
10,000. 10,000 you have enough for the three jaw chuck or a four jaw South Sampton chuck, but it is absolutely spot on with the other jaws in. Yeah, tail stock so I've got plenty of room to get me drill in to drive the compound slide. I've got the compound slide fully back and I've got the tool roughly quarter inch away from the end of the job. I'm going to lock up the main carriage. There you are. Bastard. I lock up the main carriage like that. I've set the clutch on the drill nice and light so I can't do any damage. So we've got a nice slew of power feed. A little bit more torque. Better. Right, I'll start the lathe up and take a trailer cut. Bit of bar is, but it's not made of steel. The tape has starting to take shape now. I'm going to run the lead a little bit faster and take a nice fine finishing cut. I've got a brand new touch plate here that we're going to try in the tape to see what sort of fit it is. It certainly feels good. I put a little bit of blow on there. Yeah, you can see it's in, it's in two bands all the way around. There's actually a recessed machine in the centre, so it's touching basically the full end of the taper. Quite happy with that. There it is, it's all the way around, it's all the way around there. Which means this, this taper machine on here is the same taper on the end of the spindle. So when I come to bore this hole in the protector and in the collar chuck, all I need to do is bore the hole to a depth or to a diameter where this dummy will go in up to that line there. I'll put a mark on that shoulder. Once I've done that, I know that that taper is going to be the same size as that one. 
That's all I'm trying to do. And so basically now I can take this out of the lathe. All I've got to do is put a mark on there. Then when I come to bore the taper, once that test piece goes in down to the depth of the mark, I know that that is the right diameter. I've got a piece of aluminium here that's big enough to make the spinner protector out of. And it just needs to be aluminium, it's not. All it's got to do is protect the end of the spindle when you're using a, a file or when you're turning between centres and you've got a colour in it.